<laughs> She's getting water for all of us. Thank you for coming. Um, I know a couple people in the room, but shout out from where you heard us from, or raise your hands. Did you hear, see on Facebook? Yes. <laughs> Did you get an email from me? Do you want to get an email from me? If so, then make sure I have your email before you leave tonight. Or I know Sue was promoting it at the Doggy Olympics and then a couple other things you were doing. Go to market and also Facebook too. And my Awesome. Well, I am Claire and I am with Pet Honor Society. And Pet Honor Society is new for a lot of folks, so I'll just tell you who I am and what I'm doing. Pet Honor Society, as you can see by the sign, is about honoring our pets throughout life and beyond. This is the honoring throughout life part, which is the fun part. So tonight we're making um, Halloween treats for our pups and we're going to learn how to make homemade pill pockets. And every month, the third Thursday of the month, we are right here at Jack's from 6 to 7.30. And what I do is have um, different pet professionals from around Northern Colorado come and talk about topics relevant to pet ownership to help our pets live longer, happier, healthier lives. And then on the other side of honoring our pets is beyond their lives. I am certified in pet loss and grief companioning. And what I do is I help pet parents with their senior or ill pets through their end of life journey, letting them know what their options are with their end of life choices. Um, I believe that knowledge is power and so arming yourself with all the information in advance helps you make better decisions for both your family and your pet. And I'm happy to sit with all of you and discuss all of that. I also offer grief support after you've lost your pet. I do memorial services and we'll be doing one here in December for our December pet parents group. And then I also have a whole bunch of pet lover and pet memorial items. And I invite you to come up and check out the table of all the goodies before you leave tonight. Um, I put a sign up or a sheet on your table of all the upcoming events for November and December. For November, we've got WAGS grooming coming in. And they're gonna teach us a groom dog is a happy dog. Mm -hmm. And it's tips and tricks to help keep your dog well groomed and happy, whether you take them to a professional groomer do it yourself at home or a little bit of both. So they're actually gonna have a dog here that they're gonna demonstrate with and show you how you can do some of the grooming at home to keep them looking good in between grooms. So if you use a professional groomer or if you just do it yourself, like I know at least one person here does it herself, you can maybe learn some tips and tricks about how to do it a little bit nicer and make them look all spiffy. So, um, I would like to thank Liana from What Noses Pet Sitting. She is here tonight, and we are either on Facebook Live or being filmed to go. You are on live. Facebook later, we are live. Um, so if you don't want to be in front of the camera, don't go over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is really cool, so that people who couldn't make it tonight, I'll put it up on my Pet Honor Society Facebook page. If you haven't liked my page yet, um, go ahead and do that, and I'll also tag Bones Du Jour so that you can put it see it through yeah. Sue's page as well. Um, I wanted to thank Jax for providing this conference room area for us and the tables and the table covers and the water and everything else that they're doing for us. They do this for us at no charge, which is really nice. And so if you are out and about shopping, I do ask that you come here and do some shopping and help pay it forward since they're being so kind to us. And I would love to have Alex come up and talk for a moment about Jax, if you're not familiar with them. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> Hey, so good. bad I'm wanting to say good morning. Uh, <laughs> good evening. Uh, so I work here at Jack's uh, putting together events and working with awesome community leaders like the ladies here. Um, we're really excited to have you guys tonight. Um, just to touch on a couple of things that Jack's does for pets. Here at the outdoor store, we have a lot of things that you might need to go hiking with your dog. We have packs, leashes, uh, water bowls, all the collapsible water bowls, and much more um, to go and hike with your dog. Um, but if you haven't been to our ranch and home store, which is right down 287, about a mile, um, we have a full pet and equine facility there too. So if you're dog food, cages, all of that good stuff, if you're looking for anything, come and see us. Uh, we carry really, really good, reputable brands, and we're really proud of what we have there. Um, and like I said, we're really excited to have these ladies here tonight. Um, if you have any questions for me afterwards, feel free to find me. Thank you guys. Yeah. All right, so I know you want to get on to the fun stuff. So this is Sue with Bones Du Jour, and I am just going to hand the rest of our evening over to you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Thank you.
Thanks, Leanna, and thank you, um, Jack. That's awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send this uh, board around. If you will put your name and your email on it, if you would like a copy of the slides, which has the frosting recipes and the pill popper recipes on it, then you won't. Then you can just relax and not have to take notes and write stuff down. And girls, if you want your mom to have them, just write. Oops, send them to my mom because I don't have your mom yet, so. Then that <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. So um, we, just have we are see. here to decorate spectacular treats and make homemade pill poppers. So if that's what you wanted to do today, you are in the right place. Um, I'm Sue Carroll and I'm with Bones Du Jour. My store is at 1720 West Mulberry, number B8, which is just west of City Park. Uh, I'm also at many of the outdoor farmers markets and I will be at the indoor farmers market starting in November. So, but come by the bakery, um, you're, you're always welcome there. I, Largo's been in there before, I think Zooey's been in there once maybe, I, don't, I know she comes to the market. So, um, I will probably put your dogs to work if you bring them to the store because <laughs> often there's biscuits that fall on the floor and I'll, I'll have them pick them up for me <laughs> and they, they get those free of charge. So um, I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. I am on Twitter, but not as much. So if it, you can find me there and find out things that I do there um, on that as well as my newsletter, which you will get if you sign up for the slides, but you, if you can just take the slides and then opt out of the newsletter if you like. But I promise you I will not spam you or send you a lot of <laughs> newsletters because I don't have time. So, so I usually, it's like once every couple months. So the first thing I want to talk about is how dogs decide to eat things, which is a, kind of an interesting uh, thing I found on this I found on Facebook too under um, a clinician's uh, Facebook page. And so they decide, is it inside, is it outside? Is it in my bowl? Is there a pill in it? Then I'm not gonna eat it. I just won't. Um, was it outside, is it a rock? Is it alive? Um, was somebody wearing it? What about yesterday? Was it alive yesterday or was somebody wearing it? Uh, well, okay, maybe not, so, um, you know, maybe they won't eat it then, but then is somebody going to watch them eat it, and if so, then maybe I can eat it really fast, so if I can eat it really fast, I'll eat it anyway. So that's going to be a technique that we use. Anybody have cats in here? Yeah, Judy has cats. So it's something that you can use on cats, but would work also on dogs. It's a a, tra a pill thing that my husband came up with and worked really great with our cats. So we'll talk about that once we make the, the pill poppers. So the first thing to do, you, you really only need three things for pill poppers. And the reason to make them at home is you can make them very cheaply. Um, you probably already have the ingredients. And if you don't, you can get the ingredients for not much money. Um, you can make them in so many different flavors that almost any dog can eat them. Um, and they're just fast and easy and, and way cheaper. I mean, for the, for the price of a couple bags of flour and the flavoring, it'll cost you about the same as a big bag of, of manufactured ones. And you can switch out the flavors and have a lot of fun with it. So, and it takes no time at all. You'll see, I'm gonna make one batch and um, the rest, I do have all the other flavors with me. So you can see those flavors. Um, so, then after you do the flowers, and I, I select um, coconut flour and um, oh, this is both coconut. Oh, coconut and brown rice are the ones that I use together. Um, the, it's going to be a raw flour, so you're not, you're not going to cook it. So the whole wheat flour, which you can use, but it's a little bit bitter and doesn't taste good, try it. I mean, just taste stuff before you give it to the dog, because it's not, you know, taste the dry flour and, and see if, if you wouldn't eat it, your dog might not eat it either. 
Um, the brown rice flour soaks up a lot of moisture quickly, and the coconut does as well, but it adds just a little bit of sweetness to it, so it, it's kind of nice. The buckwheat flour is a little bit, you can use that too, it is a little bit heavy. The oat flour tends to be a little bit grainy when you mix it in, so if you can get a really fine oat flour, it tastes really great. To them um, and sorghum flour I have not used but I probably will start using it a little bit and see if Joey likes it because again that's a sweeter flour that's what molasses is made out of so it's a little bit sweeter um, and then for flavorings you can use anything they like you can use pumpkin you, which I use the um, canned organic pumpkin and always get the just pumpkin, don't get the pumpkin pie mix because it's got spices in it. They shouldn't have like nutmeg, but this is just plain old pumpkin. And um, it works out really great um, for treats. I, I use, that's what I make these pumpkin treats out of and that's what I make my cakes out of for birthday parties. Um, and that works really great. Cream cheese, I use the reduced fat cream cheese rather than the non-fat. Because once the, they switch to non-fat cream cheese, they put a lot of junk in it. And usually the reduced fat is just a reduced fat milk that makes it reduced, but they put a lot of junk in that other stuff. So the peanut butter I use, I'm gonna, this is gonna be a good hack for you guys. I use the peanut butter that's fresh ground from Whole Foods, or I go to the vitamin cottage and get their fresh ground. Um, so the trick at Whole Foods is they have these already made up, but right next to them are the empty container that just has peanuts and doesn't have the honey roasted peanuts or the almonds. So you find just the peanut butter one, and if you put it in your own container, which will take you about three more minutes than just picking this up, you save all our account. So that's a, a little hack there for that. Um, and you know, chicken, you can use chicken and apple. I just did chicken and apple for tonight. I didn't do a plain chicken one. Um, so any kind of flavors that you want. You can even for the flowers, if your dog has allergies, if you take their dry food and run it through the food processor, you can make your own flour with that so that they can have it. Because sometimes they can't have everything so if they've got allergies so this is how easy it is and then I'm going to pass around some already made pill pockets so that you can see um, and look at them and I will give you some little bags if you want to and scoops if you want to take some home to try with your dog I would suggest that you try it with your dog before they need a pill because then you'll know what flavors they like you can even do it with them um, their dog with wet dog food too if you want to so all it takes is water flour which we're going to use i use a combination of brown rice and coconut that's joey's favorite and then i will make a um liver worst one. Oh, and i was going to tell you about the liver worst so this is my favorite one for um speed I really like the one from Whole Foods better because it's organic and it comes in a tube and it's organic so you have to slice it. This, you guys, is amazing. So this is already sliced. It's going to make a whole bunch, like at least 10 batches of pill pockets. And so um, what I do, whether I slice it or I use this already sliced one, I just freeze the rest. I, I freeze it in little single packs. And then when you need it, you can just defrost it and use it. So that works really great. So the first thing you do is I need two tablespoons of coconut flour. And this is not, you know, you hear about cooking and how you have to be totally exact. And you don't really have to be with this. You can add water if it's too thick, and you can add more flour if it's too thin. So it's pretty easy. Let me open this guy. 
So I put two tablespoons of coconut flour, two tablespoons of brown rice flour, and then I just put it in the, you can put it in a blender, or you can just use like your mixer, your hand mixer, do you have a question? Or no, okay. And, and you just, oh, Oh, it has to be plugged in, that would help. <laughs> yes. So plug it in first. And then, it just takes a minute, you're just mixing the two flowers together so that they're good. Then, um, you take the little piece of paper off, and then you can just run it. Put, put, the, um, put that in, that's how simple that is. And then as, as that gets mixed around, you just put in the water. And that's again two tablespoons. So that, two tablespoons, two tablespoons, two tablespoons. Um, you might need a little more water. So I kind of listen to it. You want it to kind of start to form a ball in there. It's going to need just a touch more, maybe a half teaspoon. You can actually hear it when it starts to come together. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, 
That's all there is to that. Did you like it? It's like, oh, I don't know. Oh, it's gone. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so that's how easy that is. Now I'm going to give you the trick for um, cats and for really, really picky dogs. Um, <coughs> this is um, my husband's trick. This, this works so well with my cat, I can't even believe how well this works. So you have to have party mix, Frisky's party mix. Not the best treats in the world, but these are awesome. So what's in these treats is a little star that has a hole in the middle. And I don't know if you can see the hole, but there's a little hole in the middle, a really tiny one. And especially with dog or with cat pills, they're usually pretty small, or you can cut them in half if you need to. And what you do is you just put the pill in that hole and just put enough of that to just cover it. So they can't even see that there's a pill pocket on it. So the key to this is getting them to love to take the treats. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna play with your cat a lot with treats. And you just take them and you throw them a treat. And as they finish one treat, you give them the next treat and you do about five. And then you do it again later in the day and you do about five. And then once they get used to that, they get used to that game. Then when you have to tell them you, about the third treat, you throw one with the tail pocket and then immediately throw another one and immediately throw another one. And they're gonna just go, oh, another one, another one, another one. And it's gone and you're done. And you don't have to tell them at all, it's awesome. So I'm gonna pass around um, some of the pill pockets and some bags and some little scoops. If you want to put some in the bag, feel free to. This is the liver one. And I've got some other ones. I've got chicken and apple, more liver. So help yourself, just take some home if you want to. If you want to write on your bag what you've got, that's fine too. There's some markers. So, so with cats, the timing is everything. You've got to get them going fast, fast, fast. But they, they will love it. Yes. When you're using like baby food chicken? Or I use, oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, so I use chicken, like the already roasted chicken, okay. and I just cut up a little bit. Okay. And um, you will probably need more water because chicken and apple doesn't have the moisture that pumpkin and all those other things do. And the key for the chicken is to go to sprout because sprout has an unseasoned chicken that doesn't have any salt or added garlic or other things with it. So that's always kind of nice to have that option. So what you probably are really all here for is to make little monsters for your dogs. So we're going to make some monster cookies. And what you'll need for monster cookies is um, marshmallows are going to be the tea. And you'll need two round cookies. And on this side of each table is a a package of round cookies, so if you'll take two round cookies and pass the package, then that would be great. Thank you so much. You're going to need um, some marshmallows and some scissors. So the first thing you're going to do is make the, the teas. So to make the teas, just cut one little mini marshmallow in half in the middle. Thank you. And then just cut the teeth. Then just cut the teeth. Just cut it as many as you want. One marshmallow will probably do two of the cookies. So that's all you have to do for that. Thank you. 
And then we're going to frost them. And I'm going to give you my frosting recipes. We'll just go through that super quick because we're not going to make that here. I've already made it. So the brown is a peanut butter carob frosting. And it's made with peanut butter. And I use, um, I use this Nutiva shortening. It's made with coconut oil and with red palm oil. So it looks like butter. It looks like it looks like butter flavored shortening, like if you've ever bought that at the store. But it doesn't have anything in it except palm oil and coconut oil. And it's very shortening. It looks like, I mean, it feels like shortening. It looks like shortening. Um, and I, so I use the shortening. Come on in. Hey, come on in. Um, I'm sorry. Hi, dear. And you guys got marshmallows going around. You guys got a <coughs> pair of scissors for marshmallows. Here's another pair of scissors if you need more scissors for marshmallows. Um, so then the other thing I use is peanut butter. The, and again, I use the stuff from Whole Foods. You don't want any peanut butter that has sugar, salt, or xylitol in it. So just get the fresh ground again. Um, I use organic powdered sugar, um, carob powder. And if you've not seen carob powder, it looks like this. It's much like um, <laughs> it's much like cocoa, but it doesn't have theobromine in it, and it doesn't have caffeine in it, so they can eat this, because that's what's in chocolate that dogs cannot have. It tastes kind of like chocolate. I will pass it around, again, with a little spoon thing. If you want to taste it, feel free to taste it. It's it's a little less sweet than cocoa, but it is, it is pretty good. So all of the frostings are made the same. So you put in the um, peanut butter, the powder, or the cocoa powder, and the shortening, and you process that for about two or three minutes until it's nice and and fluffy. And then you add the powdered sugar. So when you add the powdered sugar, you can add it all at once or you can add it a little at a time. But make sure you have the mixer on low. So you want it on very low. Otherwise, you'll be wearing powdered sugar and you'll be decorating your kitchen in powdered sugar and yourself. So keep it on low. As soon as everything gets together, then you can turn it back up on high. Then you're gonna go on high for about three minutes. The more you beat the frosting, the fluffier it will become. So it's... It's all, you know, all of them work the same way. You want to add the sugar at the, the last. And with this one, I added a little bit of almond milk. Um, again, you'll get these slides, so you guys will have all the recipes. Um, and then for the... For the yellow moon, the frosting, I use pumpkin, and I use turmeric to make it yellow. And turmeric is very good for dogs, so um, that's a, a fun one too. That one I made with shortening, cream cheese, pumpkin, turmeric, and powdered sugar. And then the next one is the Monster Green. And the Monster Green got green by using, I used um, pumpkin seed butter. So if you're using nut butters, um, nut butters are okay to use in a little little bit. Um, you don't want to overdo nut butters, but you never ever want to use macadamia nut butter or macadamia nuts because that causes a um, like a neurological issue with dogs. They don't really know what that issue is, but um, it does. So, so we're trying not to do that. So, so to make these cookies. Um, you guys have cut up some marshmallows, and I'm going to pass the frostings around. So all you have to do is take a little bit of the frosting and just squeeze from the top, and it will come out the bottom. 
And um, oops, I'm going to cut these a little bit more. If I have the scissors oh, they're back, back. Here. Are they back there. Yeah. It's just not coming out very fast, and I think it'll take too long for you guys. Um, these these are in um, piping bags, which you can get at Jack's. And if you want to get really fancy, you can get chips as well. But I'm not going to do that because we're going to squish them together. So basically just fill like half the cookie with some, some frosting. And take the half of the cookie that doesn't have frosting and pinch it together. And just let it sit on there. And then put the teeth on however many teeth that you want. You can just put those in there. And then, well, I think I'm going to make him a little different. I'm going to put some yellow on top. You're going to want some yellow on, or some frosting on top for the eyes to sit against so that there's something to keep them together. And I'll just make a little slide up. So just push the little eye on there and he'll just stick on there. And um, so that's all there is to those. And then the bat and the the bat and the moon, same same thing. I just do a little bit of frosting on the back of the bat. It doesn't take very much, you guys. As you know, there's cream cheese and there's fat in here. So you don't want a whole lot because you don't want your dog to have too much of that. And then he'll just stick together. So I'm going to pass these frostings around. I'm going to cut these a little bit more. Again, if you want to taste a little bit of them, feel free to taste them. I love the, I love the monster green myself. And I, I love this turmeric one. It's awesome. So squeeze from the top and decorate your cookie and then um, pass on the frosting and then I'll get out. Oh, and here's the eyeball. I've got I, some eyeballs for all the tables. Everybody needs eyeballs, right? I'll take them back. <laughs> and if anybody has any questions, just shout them out and I'll be glad to answer them while everybody's decorating the way.